Welcome to the Maverick Podcast, business growth tips and discussions to make you the expert in demand. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Maverick Podcast. I'm Rupa and today I'm joined by Can Chat. Hello. Thank nice to have you on the podcast. Me. Thank you for having me. Um, is, you've been here for like three or four weeks. Yeah, I think this is my fourth week now. Yeah. Um, I've completely lost track of time in here, I'm not going to lie, but... Yeah. It's gone quickly. It's it gone has. really, really quickly. It feels like yes. you've been here forever. So how have you found your like first kind of month at Maverick? So it's been, it's just so different to my previous work environment. So I think adjusting to that has been quite, I wouldn't say difficult because I'm really enjoying it, but it's just so different. That yeah. I think I'm just still getting used to the way of working. And obviously it's my fourth week. So yeah. yeah. A new role happens. as well. It's exactly. Like it's a different... I guess, environment to obviously what you were saying that you were used to before. Exactly. And before you were working into a, in a B2C environment and now yes. this is more like B2B. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your, like your role here at Maverick? So I'm a social media account executive for the sales team. Yeah. Um, I have touched on a little bit of marketing, um, but yeah, pre- predominantly sales, which is fun. So, you know, in your previous role, you're more kind of B2C, um, customer facing, and this is a lot more B2B client facing do you want to like explain a bit more about how you think your experience from your previous role will help you in this role so working in retail I'm on my feet literally all the time yeah I mean our role was to go up to customers and greet them constantly so I think having that face-to-face communication in my previous role like I'm not afraid to you know interact with people I feel like I'm quite approachable yeah so um I think having that approachable like I guess personality because kind of helped me come into this role because I'm not afraid to make a conversation which you have to do so much yeah. in this role um so yeah I think you know being able to gain that community communication skills is really helps me in the long run to be honest yeah so yeah. we're kind of you know training consultancy company yes. we specialize on LinkedIn and like you've just said clients will or customers were coming up to you in person in your yeah. previous role whereas here it's a lot of our work going out and finding like looking at our customers so okay. places like LinkedIn and putting ourselves to positioning yourself in front of your um, target audience yeah. how have you found that transition of like finding your prospects or putting yourself in front of your prospects rather than your prospects maybe directly coming to you like in person yeah so being in this role I've learned already learned so much about LinkedIn and what how I can, you know, create my own personal brand, yeah. which obviously is a lot easier to do in person. But I think it's kind of moving your personality to an online, like, kind of perspective, I guess. Medium, yeah. So creating content that's, you know, suitable for you and your audience, I think that's the most important. Yeah. So with my content, I'm trying to phrase it how I would speak normally. Okay. So it's quite informal it's it's me and it's not me trying to be technical or anything I just want it to be really simple and understand yeah you want your personality to come across yeah exactly so I quite I post quite a lot of kind of personal um posts on there as well as business posts so I think being able to adapt between those two it really helps me and obviously I didn't know how to do that before but I guess maintaining my personality yeah. on my platform I think it's really and not important. losing yeah, yeah not losing it regardless of how many business posts you're posting yeah. on the platform itself exactly. and I think you know we threw you kind of into the deep end by yeah. making you go into your first business show the yeah. first event um two weeks into your new role yeah, at my second to, week exactly <laughs> where you had to go and you know be really client facing and talk to people and talk to prospects and talk to them about Maverick how did you find yeah. that overall experience not gonna lie, I think that bit was actually the easiest part yeah. for me because obviously being in a, I guess, retail environment, you see so many customers that every day that you don't know, you don't yeah. know them. So I think being at that event and the fact that it was so busy and there were so many people I don't know, I wasn't nervous okay. as such to go up and speak to people because they've never met me before, yeah. like they don't know me. So yeah, I think that was actually really enjoyable because I, I can chat for days, clearly. <laughs> So, yeah. Do you feel like your past role gave you those transferable skills that you could like take on to the business show um, in Excel London and then speak to people there? Like, do you feel like you've 
gained loads of transferable skills. Yeah. Because, you I mean, you did great at the event. You Thank spoke to you. many people. Thank you. You're very confident. And I think that's also like a massive part of, you know, working in the sales department yeah. is that comfortability and confidence to be able to talk to many people. So do you think that your previous role gave you that kind of... Yeah, it definitely did. Because when I was in retail, we had to learn for example green customers amber customers and okay. red customers so the red being like the non-approachable ones who don't want any help and yeah. the amber being like mm, they're kind of unsure and the green's like those really friendly people yeah so I think being able to gauge what type of like people that I want to I guess want to speak to um really helps because you know there's no point going up to someone who paid no attention so yeah. like for example when people walk past and they were looking at our stand like you just know that they were intrigued yeah so like that was your opportunity to go up it's really similar to the fact that if they're looking at a product in the shop and they're looking a bit unsure you'd go up and help them yeah so it was like in a similar situation and that you, you'd know who wants you yeah of course I guess you know at the end of the day although we don't have a physical I guess product yeah. we have like a service yeah which is kind of the same thing you know it's a product and service yeah. Um, speaking back to like LinkedIn and, yes. you know, posting on LinkedIn, you've built two quite big platforms for yourself, yeah. um, doing what you like to do. Um, how have you built those or like, how have, how is that, you know, that kind of use of social media? Do you, how do you think that's equipped you to be able to use a platform like LinkedIn, which is quite different to uh, yeah. other social medias? Yeah. So I guess learning the analytics of platforms is really important okay. I think the biggest thing at the moment is that platforms are constantly changing platforms are constantly trying to be like one or the other for yeah. example TikTok set this trend that you know it's a video sharing reel so Instagram's trying to be like it yeah. YouTube shorts trying to be like it so I think it's knowing how to create content that is trendy so I literally started Instagram when I was in lockdown. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to post. I, yeah. I really had no goals. I just wanted to okay. like post about my passion and what I was interested in. And my friends told me to go for it. So yeah. I was like, you know what? I will. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think over time as well, you learn what hashtags were the best to use. You learn how the algorithm works. You you learn what's the best time to post. And I think consistency okay. is so key. And I think that's helped me with LinkedIn because although each like each platform's different, being consistent isn't going to change. No, of course not. So, it works on every single platform. Yeah. I think that's like one of the main yeah. things that every platform has the same or yeah. anyone that gives you a strategy on any platform. That's the main thing that they will say is consistency. Yeah. So yeah, I think you're right in saying that. Yeah. I mean, like the only difference and what I struggled with at first was probably the content writing. Okay. Because obviously TikTok and Instagram is a bit more informal. Yeah. And although LinkedIn can be informal there's still that sense of like business vibe yeah, because course. it's more of like yeah yeah because I think platform. you know for especially like a TikTok or an Instagram yeah. post the caption is not really yeah. something that you really think about exactly. or you feel like you have to like elaborate on as much yeah. whereas on LinkedIn the caption or the copy of the post that you're writing is kind of the first thing you'll yeah. see before they hook. even see yeah. exactly so. before people see the imagery or the video or the document that you've attached below it yeah so that's kind of more marketing side. Yeah. And obviously you're um, in the sales team. Yeah. Do you think your marketing side will like benefit you within the sales team? Yeah. So I think it definitely will. In the side of, I guess, the marketing will kind of really help me to push my content out there, which again, places me in front of my clients and then will produce more leads over yeah. time. So I think knowing how to put content out that that resonates with your customers you know your clients will eventually come to you yeah so I think that side of marketing is really helps me so much to be honest yeah is there anything that you're really looking forward to within like you know within your new role whether it's more salesy or more marketing is there anything that you're mm. like really excited to start doing get your hands on I'm really excited to attend more events to okay be honest. I really enjoyed the yeah. events and I think I'm most confident when I'm talking to people in yeah. person. Although I love like being online and, you know, get speaking to clients on there and other creators. It, nothing beats in like an in-person event, I think. Well, and, I agree. Yeah. I think it's really important to be able to have both, yeah. you know, 
an online presence and an in-person yeah. presence. And I think it's really important to be able to have both as yeah. well. Like not be able to just be online and just be able to type and write yeah. messages, but also be the same person online yeah. as you are in real life. Yeah. Are there any like challenges that you have faced so far while working at Maverick um, that you didn't expect or? I wouldn't say challenges, well, as such, because I feel like I haven't come across enough yet. Okay. Um, because I'm still learning so yeah. much. But I think it's the same as everyone, coming up with content ideas consistently. Yeah. Yes, I post like five times a week, but there's only so many times that you can repurpose content. I, you, repurposing content is endless, yeah. but I don't want to sound like a broken machine all the time. Yeah, of course. So yeah, I think it's trying to come up with something original it's like really similar to my Instagram although there's so much out there already I still really wanted to come up with my own original content yeah. so that people can recreate and I think yeah it's it's, it's inspiring other people I want it's to a do. process isn't yeah, it it's it definitely is. a process of you know finding yeah. your own voice I think especially yeah. on a platform like LinkedIn I guess on any platform at all yeah um, they can often feel quite saturated. Yeah. So finding your own voice and finding where kind of where you fit in and how you explore your personality and are completely yeah. yourself. Yeah. It's a bit of like at the beginning, it's a bit rocky. Yeah. It can take a bit of time, but you will get yeah. there. You'll definitely get there. Yeah. So while you've been working at Maverick, what's the most useful thing you think that you've learned so far? To be honest, I think being introduced to Sales Navigator. I've never heard of it before, okay. like ever. I knew about LinkedIn, but I didn't know anything about this extension. So when I was introduced to that, it, it shocked me how easy it was to find your clients. Yeah. Whereas like most of the time you'll spend time, like wait, I guess, wasting your time. Yeah. Looking and scrolling through your feed, you know, trying to put your content on the right side of your audience, I guess. But with Sales Navigator, you can just search all the professionals on mm -hmm. there. You can search your targeted yeah. industry. Yeah, it's very like, yeah, yeah, it's very targeted like you've just yeah. said, yeah. It makes your life a lot easier. I think. Yeah, I think that's actually a great hack. And obviously we do quite a lot of programs for yeah. Sales Navigator here at Maverick. Um, and obviously you've joined some of those programs as well, just yes. so that you can, you know, like learn about Sales Navigator a little bit more and really get caught up to speed with yeah. Sales, Nav Sales Navigator. And I do think when utilized correctly, it can be one of the best like tools and yeah. hacks, I guess for yeah. LinkedIn do you think that there's like anything else that you've like picked up on or like maybe something you've not like you've learned yourself I guess not yeah. been taught but like yeah. learned yourself through experience I know you've only been here like four yeah. four weeks but anything that you've learned so far yourself that's like a really useful hack that you can share with other people I mean I think just being introduced the whole idea of like social selling right and surrounding yourself with people who you know, increases your like creativity, I yeah. guess. I think, you know, at, even at the start when I'm like, oh, Rupert, I don't know what to post. I always come to you and be yeah. like, oh, so like, what did you get up to today? I think being able to surround yourself with people that you can get ideas from. And that's so similar to, to LinkedIn, you know, following your favorite creators, following the people that you want to resonate with. I think that's really been the most helpful yeah. thing I guess you learn how to write like them you you learn you know how yeah I no they I get, get their what you ideas mean. yeah from, generate think, their ideas yeah so yeah. even like in the Maverick office yeah. I think obviously you you've seen you know what it's like yeah. now um it's full of experts in different fields. You know, we've got our content writers, we've got our account managers, we've got our video team and yeah. we've got our graphics team. So I think there are so many experts in people's fields yeah. in the office. Yeah, like if I'm ever struggling, exactly. I just walk over to the copywriters yeah. and then they'll give me articles and things that relate to what I want to tell to exactly. my audience. So it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope you've enjoyed so far, Thank like you. your time at Maverick. Thank you And I much. hope you come on the podcast again. This has been fun. I hope so. I've really <laughs> enjoyed it. Even though we had a lot of, you Yeah, know, little bumps in yeah, the road. It's but it's fine. Been, it's been good. Um, and thank you guys for watching this episode of yeah. the Maverick podcast. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And we'll see you guys next time.